ransomware is really getting epidemic proportions, where all sort of vulnerabilities are exploited to get the software package that does the encryption of the hard drive to be downloaded. Until now, the only option that people had was really if they want their files back and didn't have a backup, is to pay one Bitcoin, which is not only around $700 in today's money, uh, but also a pain in the neck. If you never transacted with Bitcoins, it's quite a hassle to get an account, buy a Bitcoin, get a Bitcoin somewhere and pay the, the guy. So it's quite a, quite a hassle, really. But now they are offered a second option, which is, well, if you send this email with this link that is tailored specifically for your friends <laughs> and two or, or more of those people pay ransomware, you get your files back. So imagine people that may not be with high uh, moral standards sending these to lists of competitors, uh, ex-partners, uh, uh, you know, you, you can guess. Uh, who they may be sending these and in order to get their files back without to have to get the, the Bitcoin. In this demonstration, we're going to show where, uh, how, what are the options that you have to deal with uh, the ransomware today. So first is uh, really detection and that revolves around Curator and the QVM module, which is being fed by your whatever brand name of network scanner you have, so it knows what is vulnerable within your network. And in particular, this Windows 7 machine has a vulnerability that uh, is going to get exploited. So we're here in the Big Fix, in the Curator uh, console, using the Big Fix patch interface, and we put the address of the, uh, uh, the, the machine that we're going to be attacking, that 203 machine, and this is the vulnerability. And we see that it's telling us real time that such a vulnerability that allows remote execution uh, does exist on that endpoint, and we're going to attack it. So the bad guys have set up uh, two servers. In this case, one is an ISS uh, server on the outside. That is the one that the unsuspected user is going to go, and is going to be thinking that he's going to be logging into Gmail, and actually he's going to be redirected into this uh, Kali system, which is the one that actually going to be uh, launching the exploitation uh, through that particular machine. So we're going to show that from the Windows 7 machine, our fictitious friend Fran Sanchez is going to, it was lured, say, hey, log in into your Gmail account. I send you these this, uh, this, uh, hot photos for you to see, or this uh, video of a cat playing piano, whatever. Uh, and he's going to go to this uh, address in here, where the IAS server is. And we're going to also be showing from the Kali machine what's going to happen once he click into the wrong link on that web server. So Frank is uh, on that web server. He thinks he's going to be logging into uh, Gmail, so he puts... Uh, uh, his uh, user ID, and when he clicks sign in, <laughs> what he gets is he gets nothing. He says, what the heck is this? Well, his machine has actually been uh, compromised. When that attack went through, the XGS detected it. And again, it's in simulated blocking. It's not uh, stopping anything from happening, but it's telling uh, Curator with logs in this case, but it could also have sent flaws information is telling it about that particular attack. And because Curator recognizes this type of attack and matches us with the type of vulnerability that it knows that exists, it's actually going to fire an offense, calling the attention of the SOC operator about it. And here we see such vulnerability, destination vulnerable to detector exploit, and explaining that it's a the type of uh, attack being actually sent. So what can the SOC operator do about it? Well, the SOC operator will most likely dive into the actual offense and he may investigate the events that led to that. And in here, he will see in this, let's say, in this uh, script array or flow event, you see, hmm, that's the source IP where these attacks are coming. That's outside my my network. And uh, what he can do about it, he can actually right-click on the on that 
uh, malicious IP coming and he got here more options Progit option actually it's a, yeah. So you go here to plug in option and this option that generates the ISNMP alert actually tells the XGS, hey, please block anything coming from this, uh, 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 from, from that uh, uh, offending IP. Well, actually, I did it on the destination IP. I should have done it on the, on the uh, actual... Uh, source IP instead and here it is that is the one I want to block not the, 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 the IP attack but the attacker in the XGS console and see what this action looks like so here on secure policy advanced threat policy actually active quarantine rules we see the two events that I were asked to be put in quarantine actually this one that I did on mistake on the uh, on the machine that is uh, the target so I'm deleting that one and I'm leaving the other one uh, being uh, quarantine and these quarantine policies can be established to last you know 30 minutes or whatever time you want you are buying time to decide uh, now what to do of course, you should avoid having your IPS running on, on simulated blocking. Uh, so that's what we're going to be actually uh, uh, changing right now. So I'm going into Manage System Protection Interfaces. And in here, I'm actually going to edit this policy and I'm going to change it from simulation to protection. I deploy the changes. Now um, I'm protection on that interface. Now that my IPS is protecting me, uh, if we reproduce the attack, we go Fran Sanchez falls into the phishing trap. He puts his ID and he clicks sign in. Notice, you know, he can do this all day long and he's not going to be triggering that attack. Notice that uh, in Curatable Vulnerability Manager, the risk score of those two vulnerabilities, 6352 uh, and 6332, uh, has been doubled from 8.1 to 16.2, indicating that, uh, that those were under attack. But now that my IPS is protecting me, I don't even get any logs telling me about the things that it has blocked. And the other thing that the, this automation did is actually inform Big Fix about that risk score that was changed to six, from 8.1 to 16.2. So the Big Fix uh, operator can actually do the right thing, which is patch these vulnerabilities and forget about this, this deal and don't get any, any more people attacked by this type of ransomware. The, at the big fix console and we, we see those two same two vulnerabilities here and I can just go ahead and uh, select the first one of them and scroll down and have it uh, patch right from here so I take that one say take default action on that win 7 machine vulnerable and voila Big fix downloaded the actual uh, fix, uh, the Microsoft fix. So in short, having a capable IPS that can uh, detect those type of attacks coming and getting Curator to correlate attacks with vulnerabilities that exist and firing offenses indicating the SOC operator to take actions. And if you have your IPS in block mode, you can quarantine and you can actually have those type of attacks by default being blocked by the XGS, by the virtual patches that it has, and inform Big Fix about uh, uh, priorities that need to be given to vulnerabilities that are under attack and stop uh, ransomware. Another type of uh, malware attacks.